Um, you don't need to be an IFLA member. Participants can be public libraries, school libraries, or organizations working with libraries. The training is embedded in the institutions. It is not just something the libra librarians do on a personal basis. An individual librarian at each library must be identified as the key contact to ensure continuity and sustainability of the relationship. Libraries choose what to do according to the degree of involvement they want. The first thing is to get into know each other by email, Skype, Zoom, SMS, or by writing and through pictures of the library and the staffs. Then paired libraries can collaborate in three main directions. One, create joint content, projects, activities, and it could be digital as well. Two, staff exchange and visits. Three, object exchange, books or exhibitions. After establishing a partnership, you are strongly encouraged to share your experiences, ideas, activities, best practices, and challenges concerning your partnership with other sister libraries and also with the whole library community. There are several ways to do this as shown, and we can also get some good examples today. Now you want to join in this wonderful program, here are the tips. First, you need to fill in and send an online registration form, and then find libraries that interest you in the list of participating libraries and make connections with them via email. And once the partnership is decided, information, please inform our information coordinator of our section. Then the list of participating libraries will indicate the libraries has been paired. For more details, please visit the official Sister Libraries website. Thank you. Emika, thank you very much. And I just want to remind, if you want to ask some questions, you can make it right in the chat box. So now we can move uh, to our today presentations. Uh, we have uh, presentations today from uh, already sister libraries that yes paired sister libraries and their experience and uh, to speak about their experience and partnership projects and initiatives for children and young users besides we have speakers from libraries who are not yet in the program but who has held successful collaborative projects or initiatives with partners at their libraries which they would like to share with us so i'd like to introduce our first uh, speaker. The first speaker today is Desiree Thomas. She is Youth Services Librarian in Columbus, uh, Ohio, United States. So, Desiree, welcome. We are waiting for you. Hello, everyone. I am so thrilled to be with you today. Can you hear me okay? Yes, it's great. Thank you. Okay, because I could hear some background noise, so it's getting a little bit We'll check all those people. Okay. So my name is Desiree Thomas. I'm a youth services librarian in Worthington, Ohio. Um, I have been working for libraries for 24 years, and I have a passion for youth services and readers advisory. I've also been a volunteer coordinator with youth for the past 18 years. So today we're going to talk a little bit about different ways that you can cultivate different experiences for the young users in your library. So we're all seeking to do a little bit of good in the world, right? And the best bit of good that I believe that we can do is by planting seeds of goodness in the young people that we see every day, right? So when we think about programming, everything from establishing programming, once you've established that program, you're going to need administrative support. And then at the very end, I would like to give you some examples of in-reach and outreach programs that we collaborated at our library to create. So establishing programs. 
what I did as a youth services librarian is I talked to the teens that were coming into the library every day. And the conversations always revolved around food, school, sports, and dating. So I used that information to create some programs. So the first program that I created, and this is an example of inReach where your teens are coming into the library is the athlete of the week. So if they were a basketball star, a football star, they could be the athlete of the week. They filled out a questionnaire with information about themselves. And what, they, what that did was draw more people and more teens specifically into the library because they wanted to show off. They're like, hey, I'm the athlete of the week. Piggybacking off of that, I created the artists in residence because we had a lot of teens that would come in and just spend hours drawing. So they would do a little showcase in the library. Again, I was trying to draw more teens into the area. But the favorite one for me, at least, was exploring the world through snacks. We partnered with a local grocery store that had specialty food items from around the world. And I would get all of these snacks. I created this passport. The teens would go snacking with this passport. Then I would ask them about the countries they visited. They would tell me about their trips. I would learn a lot more about their life outside of the library. I was building a relationship and making this a space, safe space for them to be. The fun one was the escape room because they had to work together. So they learned collaborative skills to try to break out of the room in a certain amount of time. So most of the, the other ones, the first four examples are examples of fun programs. Um, what not to wear was fun but it was also educational because a lot of those teens were going to get jobs. I gave them an example of what a good interview experience is and what a bad interview experience was. So I had two of my colleagues, one, I wrote both scripts, but one came dressed perfectly. They did the whole, here's my name, here's my CV, and this is beautiful. And then my other colleague came in in a t-shirt with a leprechaun riding a unicorn, okay? So hat backward. So from that, I started a conversation with teens about what to wear, how to speak. And a lot of them did end up getting jobs and they felt more confident because they knew what to expect instead of being deer in the headlights. When we're considering bigger programs, I used the information that I had in the planning session to assess the needs of the teens that I was seeing. And then I also examined the library for the resources that we had. And I realized in some ways we were lacking. So that led to me researching and determining potential partners that might help me get this program that was in my head off the ground. Once I established the partners I wanted to work with, we had a meeting where we came together and designed the program together. And then after we designed the program, I went to our administration with program schematics for all the participants. And then the final thing was to launch the program. And that's how we came up with Teens Teach Tech. So the outside agencies I partnered with was the Columbus Alternative High School because they had an internship program. So their intern needed a specific amount of hours at a specific site. And then right across the street was the Griswold Center. So I partnered with the activities director there to connect teens to the older population. And the thought behind this is teens are usually born digital. Our elderly population are getting new technology thrust upon them all the time. And they're kind of like, how do I learn this? So I thought maybe the library can be that connection point to help both the teens that were needing internship hours, but also help our older population learn the services or yeah, actually learn technology in a safe environment. So this involved also myself and my supervisor. 
once we had our meeting, I knew that the intern needed 144 hours for our shifts every Wednesday. We were gonna have him from September to April. Uh, he had to have a work portfolio and the Griswold Center needed a monthly commitment, integrated scheduling calendar with reminders that we both had access to. They needed marketing help from the library because they didn't have a dedicated PR person and they needed a dedicated helper that would be there all the time. And as the librarian that crafted this program, of course, I needed prep time. I needed scheduled time off the desk during the program so that I could pinch in or pitch in if we got too many people who wanted help or if my intern couldn't be there. And then my supervisor needed program stats and outreach information for board packets because we have to provide metrics on why this is a viable program. So we went to the administration with the program schematics, the time requirement for staff. Uh, we identified backup staff who could support if I couldn't be there or the intern couldn't be there. And we gave um, our boss access to that integrated scheduling calendar. So they were also aware of who had signed up for what shift. And we connected our branch manager with the two organizations that we were working with. So everybody was on the same page. So the Teens Teach Tech program was phenomenal. And it was great in two ways. Um, our teen, Travis, was amazing. We really wanted to hire him. But what it did was it gave him the hours he needed, but it also provided a connection point for teens and older adults. So he was learning about what life was like for them. They were learning about him. It was just a beautiful experience. And then the library benefited from it because seniors started coming into the library now because they saw us more as a research resource because we were going to the Griswold Center for this. So we did Teens Teach Tech. Then we followed it up with community interns, which is, again, another employment opportunity for teens and a professional development course for teens. And then the other outreach portion for us was going into family resource nights at the schools. In terms of inReach, and when I say inReach, I mean bringing the outside in. I partnered with the science teacher, Brian Genius. He ran the robotics club. So they brought their robots to the library and did a program for us. Um, Book and Bag is a collect is a program that was with the middle school library. They would bring their seventh and eighth graders over and we would do a book club. And then from conversations with teens, I learned that a lot of them had new cameras and didn't know how to use them. And I knew there was someone on staff who was amazing at photography. So I rented lighting equipment and he came in and taught them how to use their cameras. And I brought out all the props. It was just a fun time. My nephew is a DJ and they love music. So I was like, do you wanna be a DJ? So we did DJing 101. And then finally I partnered with um, Officer Tammy. She did a safe dating program because I was hearing a lot of angsty, conversations about dating and not being sure. So she was basically explaining how to safely date and what you can do and what your rights were. So in summary, if you connect with the young people at your library via conversation, you're more likely to come up with programs that they'll wanna go to. Um, and then just be on the lookout for talented staff because there's talent all around you. And there's also outside agencies that are doing the work that you also want to do that you can partner with. But you want to work with administrative, uh, the administrative department for success because without their support, it's not going to be successful. And you can create a mix of inreach and outreach programming for young people that will allow them to experience the library in multiple ways and see the library as a resource that they can continue to go come to even as they age. So 
don't be a stranger, reach out to me. That's my email and my LinkedIn information. Uh, it's been such a pleasure just to be here in this space. Um, thank you for your time. And then, Desiree, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much. So we move on and uh, the next presentation will be from uh, Brit Marie Ingdunsringsele, Punkt Medis Youth Library, Stockholm, Sweden, and uh, our sisters. Maria Alexeva, Russian State Library for Young Adults, Moscow, Russia. Welcome. And... Hello, so nice to see you. We are many here. I am Rit Marie and I have been working in the Stockholm City Library for over like 44 years. And finally, I retired in August last year, but I'm still very engaged in libraries for different network groups in the Swedish Library Association and also in this community. I'm also the chairman of the Library Council in the Writer and Translators Union in Sweden. And since 2005, I'm a translator from Russian to Swedish, mostly fantasy, it's my favorite genre. And right now I'm studying Ukrainian to become a translator from Ukrainian to Swedish as well. Yeah, and I am Maria Alexeva. I'm an advisor to director on international activities of the Russian State Library for Young Adults. I'm the standing committee member of the section libraries for children and young adults and a member of the working group of, uh, sister library, of our sister libraries project. So today we will share with you um, some cases of uh, library collaboration for young users and specialists working with young adults of our libraries. So please, Brit Marie, will you start? <laughs> Yes, and I think I will start with your name because uh, so you, the listener, will not be like mixed up with all the name droppings because Maria, you are called Masha with a very soft she sound. And the, the person that had your job before you, she was also called, her name is Maria, but she is, was called Masha with a not so soft. Uh, so you are like little uh, Maria, Maria Alexeva, and the other Maria, she's like the big, <laughs> but it's not depending on, on your size in any way, because you're very, very like long and strong women. <laughs> You know, we, I met first with Anton in, uh, in uh, Stockholm. It was before the IFLA Congress in Gothenburg in 2010. It was the director of the Russian State Library, Library for Young Adults, Irina Mikhnova. She took uh, a delegation from uh, your library and we met at the in International Library in Stockholm. And when we walked through the city, I know Anton, he was really like, I went too fast. It was very hot, but we were like exercising, seeing the city at the same time as we visited Siri uh, Tjeket with, you can see on this picture, you see Krishna Kolmeine. She was, um, she um, created the first comic library in Sweden. It was in 1996. And now we were in the, this culture house, a very big house in Stockholm. And we also went uh, to my place, Punkt Medis, in the Södermalm in Stockholm. And uh, we had a very great time. It was very nice. And I was a volunteer in Gothenburg during IFLA. So we met also there. And we started to discuss how to become sister libraries. And we had this male conversation with um, Big Marsha at that time. Uh, and we also got an invitation to come to your uh, Congress in October the same year. But, you know, sometimes it's not so easy to get fundings like scholarship to go. So we didn't reach you in October, but we came successfully in December the same year. And then we met you, uh, Marsha, little Marsha, but now you are only Marsha <laughs> for the first time. Then you come and welcome us as, at the Sheremetyeva airport and it was really nice and you know it's already soon 13 years ago it's a really long time 
And as you see on the picture, we brought with us a book dragon. Uh, it's, it, it was a little sister of our book snake that we had at St. Mary's that we started knitting on at 2006. Uh, and we, during this day, it was very nice being there. We were very impressed by your library because you're really working hard to change the library from a quite old fashioned, dusty place to a very modern and very, it was so nice to see all the changes you, you made. So the year after in October, 2011, we finally, we, we, we could, get the funding and we could pa participate in the Library Congress. And also was the, the opening of the Comic Center. It was like inspired by Christina and you have a lot of talented people in your library in Moscow. So it was a lot of people gathering and Christina, she was one of the key note speakers. And at that time we discovered that your dragon, it had grown to 20 meters while the book snake at St. just reached 60 meters. Maybe, maybe it can depend on who was knitting. In Stockholm uh, at St. Medes, it was all, mostly the visitors, but in Moscow, it was mostly the staff and especially Irina Mikhnova, she was uh, very good at knitting, we discovered. Uh, and your book, Dragon, it was carried to the scene by eight staff members. It was really impressive to see. It was a very big, big uh, dragon. And during that Congress, you gave a book snake head to the Pushkin Library in Kazakhstan for them to start their own project, like meeting a book snake. And I hope they have continued doing so. Do, do you know that, Masha? Are they still meeting? Uh, maybe yes. they're still meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, or maybe they, they just share it with one more uh, library in Kazakhstan or... Yes, we never forever. know where, where, where it ends. And now you are going to, to continue to tell us about our joint projects, I think. Yes. yes. Um, today we'd like to share with you some cases of uh, collaboration and actually our friendship between our three libraries. So we believe our ideas will be useful and inspiring for other libraries within the Sister Libraries program because they can be easily modified, they can be easily resized according to your own interests, needs and possibilities of your library. So we think all our cases can be divided in three main groups or area of activities. So the first one is implementing joint projects, both for young library users and library specialists working with uh, this age group and with this special, um, special group of uh, library users. So this project uh, step, it is called Step by Step. Uh, uh, it is our, it was our first big joint project. It was a one year photo blog and a brilliant idea to get to know each other better. So every day during the year, our libraries posted one photo with a short comment in English of interesting event, a funny moment, a main impression of the day. Thus, it reflected the dynamic of what's happening in our libraries in Moscow and in Stockholm. Besides, this project gave us a chance to take a fresh look at our daily routine at, of our libraries and discover some details um, in very usual things, uh, actions and events that were interesting or entertaining for our sister libraries. So this project has received recognition from our IFLA section. We have presented it together uh, several times at IFLA congresses. And even some libraries from other countries have implemented something similar to our original project, and we are really uh, happy about it. Uh, and another, uh, our joint project or content we have produced together are videos of Punkt Medis and Serie Ticket for the Library Planet vlog. In 2014, 
uh, our library came up with an idea to make a series of videos which explores libraries working with and for young users worldwide. We wanted to show library specialists and users alike the best practices from different countries, the modern libraries, how they uh, how they work with their communities, what resources and opportunities they give for young users uh, for their education, communication, work, uh, self-expression, and self-development. And of course, some of the first videos have been shot at our sister libraries in Stockholm, in Punkt Medis, in Syria, take it. And uh, there was one more video of the uh, youth library Lava in, uh, in the Culture House in Stockholm. So making these videos was a great fun for us, um, but it is of course a true promotion for the libraries since all the videos are in English and are available on YouTube. Uh, they are also a big help when you want to introduce your library at professional events or uh, in any other occasions. So the next thing is about professional visits. Marie, please. Yes, and here you can see the pictures from different occasions. You see the when Christina Kolomine, she had held her speech when it, at the opening of the comic center in, in the library in Moscow. And you also see um, uh, then during this uh, in the, at the left down, it was uh, in uh, the International Library and that was in April to 2012 during the International Comic Festival in Stockholm. It came a big uh, delegation from, from our sister library in in Moscow, it was Dimitri, he's very good at taking photos. He had taken all these nice photos. Natalia, who was the chief of all projects. Alim, who was the head of a comic club and a very talented um, uh, um, artist. He makes his own comics. And Sasha, who is the, the head of a graphic like the comic center. And you, Marsha, of course. <laughs> and, um, we had also a master class during this event, and it was in Medbahus, it's very community situated. But very sadly, during the festival on the 27th of April, it was also a memorial ceremony for Christina, who so very suddenly and unexpectedly died for, from cancer on the 27th of March. It was like a, a, a month before the festival. She's really deeply missed, as you understand. Um, the next visit from you, it was in 2013, and Dimitri and uh, Big Masha, Maria, Joseva, and Lydia, they come and visit us, and we started a book exchange project uh, and after the, this very successful photo blog project. And Masha will tell you more about it a little later. Uh, in May, I had the opportunity to visit the yearly comic festival, Comissia, in Moscow. And this, this was a very, very nice event. And also, I know that Anders from CDT, he also visited this, this um, the comic festival in uh, some years later. Yeah, yes, it was in 2018 he was there. And in October 2015, I, we don't have it on the, I don't think we have it here on, on the, it doesn't matter, you can imagine it yourself. Linda from Siri Taken and I went to the Yearly Youth Library Congress together, and we also had the, the opportunity to, to invite the newly appointed Consular for Cultural Affairs at the Embassy of Sweden in Moscow, Stefan Ingvarsson. Uh, and at when you had your very great 15th anniversary of the Russian State Library for Young Adults, it came a whole delegation from uh, Sweden. You can see it up in the, the left corner. Uh, it was like seven people participated and it was, they were really like, it was so nice to have them with them. They were, they were so impressed of your library and it's, they, they continue to talk about it when we meet, of course. 
And uh, the last visit, it was in uh, 2018, in October, in another of your conferences, I went with Michaela, you have it in on the right side down, yeah. M Michaela Glynn, Eric von Dardel and I participated and we were talking about working with volunteers in the library, wasn't it so, Masha? Yes, it was yeah. about yeah. volunteering, yeah. 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 And I, I, we have also met uh, you and I and, and in uh, different uh, constellations, we have met at uh, several IFLA congresses, like for example in Helsinki and Joensuu. And there is Anton and I, we had a presentation in Helsinki about our sister library project. And then we also met in Wroclaw in Poland in 2017. And uh, yes, we also went with uh, Irina and uh, Marina. We went to, to the uh, yearly library conference in Sudak in Crimea in 2013, where we also make, made a presentation of the, our sister library project. And now I think it's your turn, Marsha, to talk about book exchange. Yeah, so yeah. What, what else can we do while we are sister libraries. Of course, you can uh, exchange books or other materials for your users. Uh, in our case, we exchanged best young adults, adult books in Russian and Swedish. Uh, first such exchange between uh, our libraries has become the, uh, the basis of one more uh, project of our, of our library. It is called Book Patchwork, and this is a collection of young adult books from different countries in their original languages. Actually, um, here you can see the photos of this uh, exchange. Um, and actually, we've made uh, several exchanges. Uh, and I'd say we exchanged books every time we came uh, to each other. <laughs> um, and one more case. Uh, you can arrange exhibitions together, or you can come with uh, your exhibition to your sister library. Uh, that's how it was for us. Uh, once we had exhibition of Russian comics and graphic novels in Stockholm, within the Stockholm International Comics Festival, it was absolutely amazing. Uh, since we were participating of uh, in uh, we were participating in this festival at the Syria Ticket, uh, we had our exhibition at the International Library uh, in Stockholm, and we had also had some additional events uh, such as lectures uh, of uh, our Russian expert in comics, Alexander Kunin, and workshop of comics artist Alin Belidov at Punkt Medis. Um, so you, you, you can see uh, pictures of uh, these events uh, on this slide. And I think we can move on. Yes, we... we... We, we all went through this period of the um, pandemic, I know, and we, we, we still kept contact to, during the pandemic. We, and you sent us uh, direct questions, Marsha, what, what about what are we doing during the pandemic? How, how are we coping with it? And how can we have our library libraries open and how to, to like change from, from physical meetings to digital meetings and so on. And it was um, published in an um, interview with Patrick Schildström. You see it on the left hand. Patrick Schildström, my colleague and me in June 2020. And uh, during that, that period, we in the Library Council in the Writers and Translators Union, we wrote a report of interviewing 14 directors from different parts of Sweden about how they acted during the pandemic, about opening our staff situation, activities, online programs instead of physical, and how to do with like quarters, uh, visits, and so on. And, and uh, it was also published, you see it on the right hand, you see we didn't have any seats in the main library, all stools were, were up on the, up and nobody could sit and 
people were very inventive. They, they take, you know, the waste basket and turn them upside down just to have something to sit on. And it was like crazy during the pandemic time. But I think for the young people, they adapted best and they were very like uh, engaged in making uh, like digital solutions. Uh, and then we will have something about the spin-off effects, I think. The next yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's really uh, one very big thing, the sister libraries, is that we have our networks and it can really create spin-off effects as to finding presentation and speakers for seminars in connecting fields, like the seminar about ADS, uh, in April 2021, when you, you wrote me, Marsha, and asked if we had some specialists in Stockholm City Library, and we we sure have, <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, we have a specialist called Lynn Altberg, but she was uh, unfortunate, she couldn't like you perform in person, and she hadn't a presentation in English. And I said, give me your presentation. I will uh, translate it. And as I were working uh, at that time, uh, hard in the pop-up moving library, I didn't know if I could participate myself. So I asked um, uh, Ingrid Kjellström, who, who has also been in, in this uh, uh, standing committee for, for this section, and now is in, um, in uh, IBI. Uh, if she could like perform and, and uh, in this uh, event, and she she said happily yes, and this is really so nice that we can cooperate cooperate and do things even if it's from the beginning it seems hopeless. It never will be hopeless. And afterwards, I know that you have published this um, different speaks speaking person that. Uh, part in the seminar and now you can all read it in Russian and in English and it's it's all, all also on the in the electronic version isn't it so Anton? yes it's at, at the academia uh, website and I'll put uh, the link uh, in the chat later yeah this is really so nice and uh, and uh, I can say we, we have discussed much and I what shall we say as like uh, final words because now I'm on pension and I, I I want to see what will happen. I of course will follow what, what's happening because I, I cannot just hold myself back. And it's I I think we were like agreed on that being sister libraries, it's a never-ending story and not a project only for one or two years, and that's it, it's over. Uh, but how to secure the, the continuity? So it will now, you know, see, so we will see that everything goes on, and it will not be dependent on special person. And this is, of course, with the help of this section, the IFLA Libraries for Children and Young Adults section. And because Marsha, Anton, and Solomon are in the standing committee. We have other talented and energetic people. And with the webinars like this, where we share like experiences, we can inspire others to also start and continue to be sister libraries. Isn't it so much? I totally agree with your thoughts and with your ideas, Brit Marie. Uh, and I'd also like to um, add um, maybe one thing, uh, you can, it, it can be an endless story, sister libraries, but you can start with the uh, first steps with uh, maybe small things, just uh, one project or one initiative, and then you will see how it will continue, uh, how new ideas uh, will, uh, will come up uh, and you will implement uh, various uh, joint activities. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Dear friends, thank you very much for this great wide range of uh, different activities. It's, it's Yes, it's so many years and so many different activities. And the next presentation is from Jasna Burkic, Senior Librarian, Children's Department of Belgrade City Library, uh, Belgrade, Serbia. Welcome. Thank you. Just a minute.
Okay. Hello yes, to see. everyone. Yes, can everyone see that? Yes, yes, thank yes. you. Okay, okay. Hello, my name is Jasna Berkic and I'm coming from Serbia, uh, from Belgrade. Uh, just a minute to start the DS from Serbia, from Belgrade, and I work in the Belgrade City Library. To be more specific, uh, I work in children's department of the Belgrade City Library, and we are highly engaged in organizing free educational creative workshops and programs for children and youth. You can follow us on the Facebook and Instagram to see our work. And uh, uh, we really use all our talents and knowledge and creativity, ideas, resources, and especially willingness to learn in order to create and organize interesting and modern and up-to-date uh, programs and activities for children and youth, such as, I don't know, storytelling workshops, creative writing, um, different Kahoot challenges, uh, gaming, arts and crafts and everything. But it's really not always enough. Uh, we need help. Uh, we have to connect and to cooperate with others, uh, with other libraries, with other institutions, uh, uh, NGOs and public as well, with other organizations and individuals. Because uh, if we only use our own, our own resources, it can be very limiting for our young users because that way we deprive them of so many good things uh, they could do in the library. So uh, we really try to, to connect and cooperate as much as we can. And uh, I can say that uh, results are pretty amazing. Um, here is one example. Uh, we want really hard to keep the pace with innovative methods uh, of working with children. Uh, we want to meet their needs of our young users to help them be future ready and of course to follow the FLA guidelines for children and young adults. So we decided to introduce Technoteca, a digital maker space uh, into the library. So we equipped our library with uh, all kinds of digital tools and teaching aids and gadgets such as 3D printer, Lego robots, uh, VR headsets and other stuff. But there was one problem, uh, and the problem was who was going to run these workshops and teach kids how to use robots and 3D printers, because my colleagues and I, we are not so high-tech persons. So that was the right uh, uh, moment to think about partners. We did a thorough research and found, let's say, perfect partners for us. Uh, we found EduLab, an NGO organization. It is a citizen association engaged uh, in field of advanced techniques uh, uh, of learning and creative use of Lego education didactic tools. And uh, we find uh, 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 our other partners was uh, Belgrade University, Students of Applied Arts and Architecture of Belgrade University. So thanks to them, uh, we developed Technoteca project and organized a bunch of great workshops uh, of 3D printing and programming Lego robots. So uh, our young users, both girls and boys, got the chance to uh, deal with computers, to deal with technology, electronic devices, robots, and applied science for free in the library with the help of, uh, let's say, uh, young volunteers uh, slash experts. So uh, then uh, kids learn how to organize battle of robots, <laughs> but they did that on their own. So other example of a good partnership is a partnership with the acting school. So let's say acting school is so cool uh, because we have beautiful cooperation with them. Uh, and that way we can often uh, organize theater play for kids, kids acting for kids and provide our young users with a great and quality time in the library 
and uh, it is, uh, let's say, win-win situation because it is also useful for young actors as well. They can uh, practice public performance and deal with the strange uh, fright and everything. Uh, we have also very good uh, cooperation with publishing houses. It is so important because we have no budget and that way they bring writers to the library so kids uh, can meet them and uh, talk with them about books, about writing, inspirations, ideas. They can meet illustrators and, as well. And the most important thing uh, is that uh, they uh, kids get more attached to books and reading and to the library. And these meetings build uh, uh, memories for uh, all life. So um, one other good example of partnership every year as the public library, uh, we take part in the very significant manifestation Days of Belgrade. And, uh, we created uh, on our own, I don't know, some programs and everything, but last year we celebrated big times uh, thanks to the joint work. We found partner, Eduard, and your organization active in organizing educative and creative uh, uh, programs for children and youth. So we gave them our um, library space and we invited young users uh, and gave them opportunity to learn a lot about Belgrade uh, in 19th century, about social and cultural life of that time, uh, through dance, through old crafts, they learned how to crochet, uh, about fencing. So you can imagine how much fun children uh, had, and it was a real example of creative, um, playful learning. Uh, we also uh, have a good cooperation with public institutions, with the Institute of Public Health. Uh, we raise awareness every year uh, among children about the importance of uh, healthy uh, life and uh, health week. So during the European Week of Public Health, we organize a cycle of workshops in the library about health and healthy food and healthy styles. And the uh, children participate in drawing contests uh, organized by the Health Institute. Uh, and then in the library, we organize an exhibition of uh, children's drawings so they can come with their parents, with their teachers and preschool teachers to, to visit this, uh, uh, that exhibition and to participate in our workshops. And recently, uh, we got a call from one Serbian library. Uh, they wanted uh, to visit us during uh, this winter break, but they wanted uh, something special, some interesting program for their kids. Uh, so we create a bunch of great, uh, great activities. And uh, we invited kids, uh, uh, our kids as well, so uh, they had a really great time there. Uh, they uh, they uh, exchanged a lot of ideas, a lot of games, uh, such as um, guessing book title uh, games uh, through pantomime and some others. So, so it was really very useful and a very important image for our library. Uh, uh, during the summer, we had uh, um, one uh, granny, ex-belly dancer, as a volunteer in our library. So it was a very uh, lovely dancing summer for kids. And uh, we had one mom. Uh, she was uh, um, she's very skillful in working with clay. Uh, so she organized some workshops for kids as volunteers. So as I said, uh, we librarians can't know everything and can't do everything by ourselves, but we can uh, uh, find the right persons um, and uh, realize ideas. Uh, one good example of, of a joint work as well uh, uh, with this uh, puppetry lady. Uh, this was an amazing experience. Kids learn a lot. And we librarians learn so much about making puppets. So you see, uh, I made uh, this um, <laughs> great uh, dragon and I use it uh, a lot in my workshops and kids absolutely love it. And all because uh, 
this great uh, workshop we had in our library uh, with the partner. Uh, and um, we are almost there. Uh, uh, this was also an amazing experience of collaboration with an organization that created a storytelling project. Uh, it's a, a story time, uh, an actor and two artists. Uh, they uh, run that project in our library for free for our young users. And we librarians, we picked stories suitable for kids ages four to eight because it's our specialty. And then they uh, really pulled some real magic in front of uh, our eyes. They prepared that stories and they adapted them and they uh, uh, make them come to, let's say, uh, to life. And thanks to that uh, joint work, we learned so much. We got some incredible ideas and insights, and we applied some new methods in our work with kids. And today, our children's department uh, is really famous for storytelling sessions that now we librarians do that by ourselves. And the last thing for today, uh, I just want to present uh, uh, you briefly an amazing supercalifragilistic project. It's a collaboration of 10 Serbian uh, libraries working together, uh, organizing an online uh, poet recitation competition. This project lasts, lasts five months. And during that period, children, aged 9 to 14, they got for free online mentors, Serbian poets, uh, and, uh, and they learned uh, how to write poetry and how to recitate as professionals. And uh, at the end of that project, because there is a small competition, they uh, get some awards uh, for best participants and uh, libraries organize a celebration um, and mentors, they uh, come to meet the participants. And it's a really big thing. It's not an easy project because um, it needs no uh, budget almost at all. Uh, because everything is online uh, except for the end, but it needs good coordination and organization. Uh, but kids, they got so much. They got uh, re they they got richer for one incredible experience and new skills, and it's really worth the effort. So uh, uh, for the end. Uh, Although we have no budget and uh, some system solutions uh, for cooperation and partnership, uh, we really have to continue to put our personal effort and uh, enthusiasm and uh, to get to know our community, because as we can see, there are a lot of talented and skillful people around us, uh, parents of our users, grandparents of our users. And uh, we have to have also some planned actions, of course, and to connect more with libraries. So after this webinar, I, I will definitely apply to find a sister library. And I can't wait uh, to become the part of uh, this amazing program uh, we are witnessing today. So thank you very much. And really, let's cooperate. This is my email, so you can write me, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jasna. It's uh, very interesting. Uh, and now we are moving to our last but not the least uh, presentations. Today it's from uh, Robin Gibson, uh, Youth Services Manager from Westerville Public Library. It was early as far as I understand. Uh, now Fairfield Country District Library, I'm sorry, uh, higher United States. And uh, Maria Alex Yusson, uh, she is director of Gislavet Library and deputy head of culture in Gislavet, Sweden. Welcome, dear friends. Thank you, Anton. Uh, hello, everybody. Nice to see you. And um, well, we have a presentation for you as well. Uh, I'll, I could start by presenting uh, myself, Maria Alexuson, and I all work in Gislavet, as uh, you heard. As a library director, I've been working there since uh, in 24 years, and I'm also head of culture at this moment. And uh, please, Robin. 
Yes, and I am uh, Robin Gibson, um, and I uh, was the Youth Services Manager at the Westerville Public Library in Ohio until this past December um, of 2022, and now I'm at a nearby library. So um, I'm here to talk about, yeah, the sister re library relationship between Westerville and East Leved. Yes, and it's been a journey. We have been together for quite many, many years. I think uh, since 2011, so yeah. yeah. More than 10 years, okay. And here you see where we are located. At East Leved is in the south of Sweden, and Westerville in the east of uh, USA in Ohio. And uh, uh, we started, uh, yes, we'll start with my library. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, this is the uh, Yislaviad uh, library, um, where we, uh, our library is in two floors, as you can see. Uh, we um, rebuilt uh, our library in uh, 2007. And uh, before that, uh, the children's uh, part of the library was uh, very small. And uh, when we rebuilt it, uh, one floor is uh, for the children. So they have a very big place and it's uh, very important that uh, they have big place. Um, and I think the next, yes, the next picture you see, uh, we don't have bookshelves everywhere. And so we have a big uh, uh, open space where that we can use for um, when we have authors visiting or other activities and programs. All right. Um, and now we're at the Westerville Library. Um, we also have a large uh, children's area uh, of which I was uh, the manager. So this, uh, our big red wall kind of introduces you to that area. Our newest addition is on um, the right of your screen, which is a giant kind of peg bright board. So um, which kids and parents, I gotta say people of all ages uh, love this new, um, interactive play area. So, um, and then as you come into uh, the children's area, um, you can see again, there's some lots of open spaces. Um, and then as you go further back, there are more play spaces. Uh, there is even a tree house. Um, and um, yeah, so a large play area for the younger kids. Um, you know, lots of activities focused on early literacy, um, lots of things for families. So um, I think both Westerville and Yislaved have really appealing children's areas and areas for young people. Um, and I was fortunate enough to be able to visit Yislaved. I was gonna say, and the librarians back in Westerville I mean, we everybody loved that frying pan, Maria. I mean, the the kids. That's a, <laughs> such a wonderful play <laughs> uh, structure that you have in Yislaved. Um and in um, uh, the middle picture, um, Yislaved is different than Westerville in that they have branches. And the, in the middle picture, the person in the middle was Elizabeth. Actually, initiated our sister library program. So at the Anderstort branch. If I'm remembering that right, is that correct, yeah, Maria? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes one of uh, our six branches. And she was the pioneer here. <laughs> yes, and seven years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and then, yeah, fortunately, the following yeah. year, um, I say, I, a fortunate accident of geography, I don't, um, IFLA was in 2016, was in Columbus. And so Maria was able to visit Westerville. Um, which is just outside Columbus. Um, and we were able to present together um, about sister libraries um, as part of the IFLA World Congress. So. Yeah, that was very exciting uh, to do that. And then uh, we presented and talked about things we had done so far uh, together uh, at our uh, libraries. And it was very nice to come to uh, Vesterville. I, didn't think I would, but <laughs> very fortunate that right. the I, Congress was just there. Yes. And so I th we thought today we would talk about things that we um, have happened, you know, mostly since those visits and everything. And I, I will say also, when we started the Sister Library Partnership, um, again, I didn't expect to be able to visit East Leved 
either. Um, and that was, um, it's just, I have an interest in Sweden and happened to be there. So, so the visits were kind of a nice surprise um, and, and they definitely enriched the partnership, but mm -hmm. they weren't something that kind of we foresaw at the outset. So I'll just say, you never know what might happen um, when you start uh, this kind of a partnership. Um, yeah, yes, and so- and, uh, um, Since uh, the last years, there, last, uh, there has been the pandemic, as you know, uh, we uh, we met uh, uh, digitally and uh, uh, started to talk about what we could do together when now that everybody was uh, uh, on teams or uh, whatever and um, it came up with this great idea and uh, you were very much involved involved Robin in this so I think it's best oh, to talk about okay. this yeah. <laughs> yes um, and I, I in some ways, it's kind of sad that it took a pandemic to get us to realize mm -hmm. that we could do a virtual book club. Um, but, um, you know, so at first we met during the pandemic online and we're just kind of talking, um, as others said earlier, just about how things were handled, you know, differently in different countries and with different libraries. Um, and then we had the idea of doing um, you know, a book club. Um, we so we and we concentrated on graphic novels, knowing those have a very high appeal for teens in both countries. Um, this program was geared for ages 11 to 18, so kind of middle school in the United States and up. Um, we picked that age partly uh, because um, by about that time, um, uh, the Swedish teens, tweens, and teens were able to communicate in English. Um, uh, since we don't have any Swedish speakers in the United States. So that's, I mean, I feel it's really fortunate too that, I mean, that we're talking in English today. I mean, that's that's a luxury. I know you all don't have, and I'm amazed that you're presenting in, in another language often for many of you. Um, so that was a big thing. So that was why we, that age group was chosen partly. We had to deal with some things like, what time is a good time? Because, um, you know, teens don't like to get up in the morning. Uh, so we, it was 11 a.m. in um, the United States and it was 5 p.m. in Sweden. So we came up with a time that we thought was like not too early and also, you know, not too late to interfere with other teens activities. Um, and our we met three times uh, to, to start with. Our first meeting was just a fun meeting with the, the teens to get to know each other. Um, it was one of our most fun sessions uh, where they just kind of started to open up just to talk about stories of school. We came up with some prompts, I would say, for each time for discussion, but we mostly tried to let the tweens and teens lead the conversation. and you know, see where that would take them. Um, because the teens have some things in common and then, you know, some things that were very different. Um, we talked about like the driving age in the United States is uh, 16, but it's not until 18 in Sweden. Um, and so we learned about, um, Maria, you'll know more about these. They're the EPA tractors that it's legal to drive a farm tractor in the north of Sweden when you're 16. So, um, you know, yeah, there was some- right. <laughs> it's uh, called EPA, EPA. Uh, uh, okay. It can be a, a real a car, but you um, uh, uh, make things with it so you don't, you can't drive more than 30 kilometers. And then you only have a moped, uh, you don't have to have a driver's license for it. So on yeah. our streets, there are many of this EPA. Yeah, so... That was really interesting for our, our teens to learn about. Um, and then they, they just talked about like their favorite candies, like what kind of candies available in the US and what is in Sweden? Um, uh, again, what favorite, what games do they like to play? Um, you know, they had lots of those things in common. common. Um, what their pets were, I guess there were lots of pets on Zoom during the pandemic. So the teens talked about those too. Um, and then we, um, talked about two graphic novels. Um, the Lumberjane series fortunately has been translated into Swedish, um, which is also interesting to see um, to me always what's been translated and what hasn't. Um, so, uh, and that's a really popular series in the, in the US too. Um, 
And it was also available digitally on our Hoopla service, so it was really easily available. Um, the other book we read was um, the first of the Northern Lights um, series, which is called The Valley of the Trolls. Um, and that's a Norwegian artist. Her name is Malin Fouch. And this was an interesting um, kind of issue for us to work around because it was translated into English, but it was only published for the British market. And to my knowledge, it's not available in the United States yet, which is really too bad because the artwork is appealing. And um, Maria, I know uh, Carolina went to a great extent to buy copies for us and send those to the US and she had to go through all kinds of custom regulations. Mm -hmm. But that also made our teens feel just so incredibly special. They had a book that no one else, you know, in the US was reading. So, um, and it was a story um, that it's kind of infused with um, Norse mythology. And so um, that also, you know, brought a cultural element to the, the whole discussion and the whole project. Yeah. So that was, yeah, one of the most fun and successful things that we did. Mm -hmm. um, and we can move on to the story yes. trail now. Yes, I can start. Uh, yes. um, the story trail, story walk. Uh, that's also an idea that we came up with together uh, to, to make a story trail in Yislaviet and one in uh, Vesterville. And that those uh, story trails would show the same uh, pictures. And we wanted uh, to use the, um, the book Hundpromenaden of uh, the Swedish author Sven Nordqvist, uh, The Dog Walk in English. Uh, uh, this, bo this, books, this book has no letters, it's only pictures. And th um, for that, it's uh, perfect for all the uh, children uh, to look at these pictures and they don't have to read because there are no letters words. Um, so um, we took, uh, we contacted the publisher, his uh, Sven Nordqvist and his publishers, and asked uh, and t told uh, them about uh, the project that we wanted to do, and uh, they uh, thought it was a good idea. So we made a contract uh, to buy this, uh, uh, to be able to have his pictures on this uh, story trail, and on this um, well, as you also see on the picture, they are uh, um, quite close to the ground so that the, the children can look at them. So we made a, a contract with them and uh, uh, the contract said we could use them in Islaved and also in Vesterville. Yes? Yes. Um, yeah, and this was wonderful. It's, it's a wordless book and it's also kind of a hide and seek book. So you can mm -hmm. see this is at the story trail the picture in Westerville um, of the kids looking, you look for the dog kind of on each page as he travels mm -hmm. through many fanciful landscapes. So again, this is um, an example. Um, I mean, Sven Nordquist is iconic in Sweden and um, I would say he's probably less well-known in the United States, sadly. So for me, this was a great opportunity to bring, again, another element of, of Swedish culture, you know, to kids in the United States. Um, and we were lucky, again, with you all getting the digital rights. It was wonderful to be able to have them to reproduce. The pictures are so rich and vibrant and detailed um, that having those digital, um, digitally and being able to, you know, share them that way what is it was wonderful yeah yeah so this is so we've done um uh the first program they talked about was you know a synchronous virtual you know program together and then i think maybe over the years we've done more of these type of parallel programs where we do we brainstorm together and we have a, you know an idea that is in westerville and also in yislavad is implemented so there are different ways of doing programming. Um, and then other things I think we do in parallel. Um, I'm not sure, Maria, when did you all start the pop-up libraries? Um, well, it was maybe in 2015 or something, oh, I think. Yes, I think you were pre-pandemic yeah. with this. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, we uh, drove around in uh, the different uh, um, cities or, um, what do you say, in, in Islaved 
um, and uh, had our library with us. And well, as you see in the pictures here. And at the beginning, we also had the, um, we were able to have a concert together with other others in Gislaved municipality. Uh, but this is uh, the picture here is just the pop-up library uh, okay. that we are have been um, working with ever since. Yes, and, and you have uh, the same. Well, we have a similar. We um, in Westerville, we have a book bike. Uh, we have other, and we also do outreach and go out to the park. I was saying again, we did this pre-pandemic, but probably more during the pandemic itself. Taking taking the library outside. Um, yeah, and to meeting people where they are. So that would be another kind of sort of parallel type program. Mm -hmm. um, and then one thing that, um, you know, I, I feel like really came out of my visit to Yislaved, um was my thinking about where to put books in other languages in the United States. Um, and because they had this, um, you know, face out shelving bins in Yislaved with the different languages. And I know both our communities have um, rapidly changing um, demographics, more diverse people, more, um, communities, um, and it just keeps growing. Um, and um, in the United States, our, our section for languages would usually be in the nonfiction. So one of the things I did in my library when we came back was to pull those out. Um, and we created a world language collection, which is now over 40 different languages. Um, and our this was a real collaboration within the library in that our collection development librarian really started looking for different languages. We also talked about the schools, talked to the schools about which languages they were seeing in the community. Um, you know, so we would know where to look uh, for um, and what languages to look for. Um, Central Ohio has a large Somali community, so we knew about that, but we had an increasing Nepali community. Um, and in this past year, Westerville has a large number of Portuguese speakers in one school is seeing. So that really helped, um, you know, guide, guide, guide the languages that we purchase. And because we wanted to call them world languages, um, rather than foreign languages, when we were looking for, this is just a little detail, like stickers to put on the books, um, our tech services department actually created our own sticker um, for that project because, you know, for these communities, they're not foreign languages, they're their languages, they're world languages. Um, so um, that's one of the things that kind of came indirectly out of those professional exchanges and those visits to each other. Um, yes, and then yeah. uh, some things that we have, what we have learned that we would like to share with you uh, during our um, collaboration during these years, uh, and uh, that it takes time to build this uh, partnership, uh, and it uh, you you um, well it, share ideas, programming services. It happens over time. You can think about something, and maybe next year you'll you'll be able to do it. So it's a, it's a great to have this uh, collaboration um, and that we have uh, different perspectives and that we get different perspectives uh, due to this uh, all these communications that we have um, during staff and to our uh, children that are visiting us. Yes, and then there's surprises too. <laughs> Would you like to tell about that for me? Um. Yeah, it's just uh, like we said, being able to visit wasn't an initial consideration, but it was a really nice surprise. Um, and uh, COVID gave us the opportunity to communicate, to collaborate in new ways, um, like with the book club. Um, and when I was looking back through my things, Maria, um, I remembered this very or in May 2020 that Yislaved had challenged uh, Westerville um, to the blinding lights challenge that everyone was going through. And I just looking back, I was just struck by, you know, how in the middle of all of the uncertainty going on around the world that you all, you know, were able to do something so fun and joyous and send that to us. And so, you know, of course, Westerville had to respond. So um, those videos are just a fun thing that you could watch at another time. Um, so, but a lovely surprise um, that came out of the collaboration. So. Yeah, and we're looking forward to the future as well. 
And that's it. Thank you, Robin. Yes. Dear friends, thank you very much to all the presenters. It was very, very interesting. Uh, and now we are ready to uh, watch what is in Q&A. Uh, there is one very interesting question from Anastasia. I'll uh, make it aloud. So a question for everyone. Uh, do you think libraries from similar or different cultures, example, Gracia a library from a European town versus from an African or Asian city should become sister libraries? Will cultural differences in rich practices exchange or make it more difficult and less applicable? What do you think about it? Everyone can answer. As for me, of course, I think that it's even better if it's different cultures, because in this uh, situation, everyone can take additional information, additional emotions, a different, uh, different views on life. Sometimes it's very difficult for other people to understand why people in other countries do what they do. And it's impossible to understand them if you don't know about their culture, about their traditions. And only if you know about their traditions, you, you can get the possibility to understand them. So as for me, and we always say about it, that the most challenging, the most interesting variant of sistership is uh, not about uh, the same, the same, the same, it's not always the same, but almost the same cultures, but it's most interesting if you uh, can involve uh, people from different, absolutely different cultures and traditions. Maybe someone can say anything else. Okay, dear friends, thank you very much. So we've got uh, four different presentations and I think you all can understand that it's all about your own fantasy. It's all about your own fantasy of how to build this partnership of what can be involved in this uh, partnership. It can be uh, simple, it can be much more advanced, but it all depends on you, on your own. Nobody else will help you to make this partnership uh, really interesting. So I just want to say thank you again to all the uh, presenters today. And uh, I hope we'll be able to see soon, not only via uh, this Zoom sessions, but also uh, to see everyone in real life. Thank you again to everyone and bye-bye. Uh, Oh, I'm just forget about one thing. Let's make uh, a photo, photo of all of us. And let's make a smile. Yes, wait a bit. Wait. Yes, turn on your cameras, please. <laughs> That's great. How many of us? <laughs> Yes, so one, two, three, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear friends. See you soon. Bye-bye.